Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petra Fine Pumpkins here and today I want to once again talk about Alvo for the PSVR and Oculus. We've got a good bit to talk about, got a good bit of information that was released in the past week alone. I have got a new gameplay trailer that released a couple of days ago and then last night there was a Q&A session where a lot of interesting information was divulged. First to really have some questions answered, I know I found out some very interesting things from that QA, but let's start with the gameplay. Uh, that I have here. I've put it on mute. You're only gonna be missing some gunfire sounds and some music So that's why it's on mute. Uh, it's very short. It is only 40 seconds long uh, But we do see something that I've wanted to see for a long time Which is grenades and throwables. So that's the very first thing we see here is a grenade being tossed uh, Let's go back to it here. It looks like it works very similar to Firewall basically it looks like you hold down a grenade button the arc of light or whatever you want to call that will appear and you release us and it'll throw the grenade automatically. That seems to be the case here, uh, in which case looks fine. Animation wise, again, I keep saying this, but Alvo, keep your expectations in check when it comes to production values. Not gonna be top of the line animations, but look, they look fine. They're not looking bad. We see something pretty funny here with this guy. He goes into a pretty crazy ragdoll animation type, well not animation, but some weirdness going on there, which I think is kind of funny. This happens on Firewall too, where characters can get stuck in walls and their arms get all elongated. Uh, kind of looks like something out of Silent Hill sometimes. You could argue it's not very polished or whatever, but uh, I think it's pretty funny. Anyway, let's keep going. So we're in this new map. Well, it's not a new map, actually. I think this is like the first map they showed in terms of uh, screenshots and stuff. This is like a suburban area, this map previous. Yeah, this one is like the market one, I believe. Uh, and then it cuts to the suburban, you know, uh, residential area where you're going through people's houses and shooting the shit out of the place, basically. So yeah, and now we're transitioning now to the castle area. This part here, a little bit interesting because we get to see him put some shots in this guy and he lands a headshot and as you can see, now, from what I, I'm guessing here, I suppose I should say, is that the hit marker turned red. Now, I'm assuming that's because he got the headshot, but maybe, now that I'm thinking about it right now, uh, maybe it's just because he's dead. Maybe the turns red when they're dead. But let me go back and make sure, because he's killed someone else in here. Did this turn red? I don't think it did. Let's see. No. So, it looks like it's just red when you get the headshots. So that's kind of... A nice little visual identifier and now we're seeing smoke grenades being used pretty cool the clouds look pretty thick I'm not gonna say they're like the most realistic looking cloud it's probably not gonna be volumetric lighting filtering through them or whatever but still they look like they do the job and this part here I thought was kind of interesting because uh, you see this here the yellow brick road we'll say or whatever you want to call it. it's like a pathway here is like glowing gold and you can see it down here too. I don't know what that's about. It might have something to do with the mode that's being played. It might have something to do with like a spawn area. Maybe that's like lined off. Maybe uh, I don't want to speculate too much because I could be completely wrong. Uh, but I think it, it just really stands out. I'm not really sure what's going on with that big golden uh, lighting effect that's happening there. Now, one thing I will point out, and this has reminded me here, is that each of the maps, I believe we're going to have like a day version and a night version. So this is the suburban map, but at night time. So I'm not sure if they're counting like day as a map and nice as one map, or if they're one map together, I'm not sure because I've heard people say there's seven maps at launch. I thought there was only four. People are saying there's seven. I don't know if that includes day versions and night versions too. But yeah, this here just demonstrates some grenade and explosions and stuff like that, which look pretty all right. Not top AAA, as you can see. Coming soon to Oculus and PSVR, which I think is interesting. I'm not sure they've ever like put Oculus front and center like that. I know they're testing on Oculus, uh, but I wasn't sure if, it was, if they were dedicated to PSVR first and then Oculus later. The way it looks here, maybe they're both coming at the same time. Or maybe Oculus will come first before PSVR, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just let this footage play and loop in the background while I go through the, uh, the Q&A. So, this Q&A appeared on their channel. I'm not sure who hosted it. I know the name here is Demolition Sean, and I think his co-host might have been um, uh, Veni Vidi Vici. 
I'm not sure, I'm not a hundred percent. It just appeared on the official Alvo YouTube channel. There was no description underneath. I believe it took place on Twitch and was later brought there. But they did this interview with Steve CLT. And Steve CLT, from what I understand, he's the mystery guy who kind of swooped in to the Alvo or the Martin Pole team, pumped some money in, I assume, as the investor and kind of revived Alvo back when it was cancelled, back when it looked like it was dead and buried. So before they even got into the questions and stuff like that, they, well, Steve went over just some details that are worth mentioning. So they're targeting the PSVR and Oculus release. That's their focus right now. He didn't say if they're both coming at the same time or what the story is there, but that's what the, the focus is. Now, next he said that on release, they're aiming to have Team Deathmatch and Free For All. So there is talk of Search and Destroy as well, but it's looking like that's not going to be coming on release. So just expect Team Deathmatch and Free For All, and then sometime after release, Search and Destroy will pop up somewhere. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So he's described that they have a real emphasis on the fast pace of this game. He reckons it's faster than any other PS viewer shooter out there. Uh, and he's compared it to basically Call of Duty in VR. Uh, in terms of like visuals and graphics and stuff like that, the feedback they've been getting, because right now they're doing Oculus play tests, the feedback they've been getting on Oculus is that it looks really, really good and that they're happy with that. And in his opinion, he talked about the PS4 footage that they've seen. He says he doesn't think there's a huge drop off in graphics. He still thinks it looks pretty nice. Now he did have the caveat that they didn't have a full 5v5 match going on the PS viewer but well he was confident he did say that they expect that they'll maintain that 60 frames per second even with 5v5 going on on PS viewer he also brought up the fact that they're nine days away from submitting this thing it could be less now I think it's like six is this I'm not too sure but uh they're very close to submitting the uh, open beta build to Sony they're hoping they're going to get it through the first round of the QA testing uh, but he did mention that there's like some vague requirements from Sony on their end So that's kind of got me a little bit concerned if things are vague Maybe they're like well, it might be difficult for them This might explain why so many people so many developers and their games get held up at QA if Sony aren't like Crystal clear about what they're actually wanting, you know He was at pains to mention that Alvo's gonna have all the comfort settings available, uh, you know blinders uh, smooth locomotion all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna be there and that you'll be able to set the speed of your turn and all that kind of stuff I think the only comfort setting that won't be there will be teleportation and that's kind of understandable You can't have people teleporting around while other people are smooth locomotion around it won't be fair to just be able to like vanish like just like that So then they went into the question kind of segment of this interview and the first one I thought was really interesting It's one that I've been thinking about myself because we all know that Alvo supports the DualShock 5, the aim controller and move controllers. Uh, but I've always thought that playing this with moves would be like such a huge handicap because everyone else has sticks. So he's asked here, how does the move controllers compare to the aim, for example? And so Steve replied that there is an inevitable handicap because of these, those analog sticks. But when you're using the pistol with the move controllers, it's going to feel a lot better than with the aim controller. And as you can imagine, that makes sense because with the aim, when you're using a pistol two-handed it feels a little weird but they came up with kind of a clever well i think it might be a clever idea to kind of compensate for the fact that move controllers will be at a disadvantage and that is that pistols in this game are going to be powerful to make up for the fact that the move controllers are going to be at such a disadvantage so so because you're using your move controller and because the pistol feels more natural than any other gun with the move controllers they've buffed up the pistols it seems now that's all subject to change if people hate that they can go in there he said that themselves they can go in they can change the numbers around but basically pistols are going to be powerful in this game because of move players which i think is kind of a clever way of evening the odds he also mentioned that the move controllers will not bring like manual reloading as some people maybe were expecting so it will be a button press and he says at least at launch this is this is going to be the case uh, because the game is so fast paced you don't want to be fumbling around with like inaccurate move controllers trying to reload a sniper rifle for example or whatever uh, as he said it would detract from the experience that's his words and I agree with that so I think that's a smart thing to do I think that's why firewall as well is just a button press and the reload is done you don't have to worry about that uh, I think that's the way to go about it until such a time where we get super accurate motion controllers where it's you know second nature to do it that way so the next question then was about sniper rifles he was asked is the sniper rifle in the game a bolt action and he said he's 99 percent sure it is a bolt action so therefore like one shot reload so it's gonna be one shot to the head will kill with the sniper two shots to the body that's the way it is right now again all that can change so he brought up the fact that alvo's reveal trailer 
uh, that CG render that was done. There was a heavy kind of emphasis on showing zoom scopes that like actually functioning. So a lot of people got excited about that. Uh, he said that it's not hard to do that on Oculus. But unfortunately on PSVR it is a challenge to do that. Uh, so he said that the initial release will most likely not have zoomed scopes. So don't expect zoom zoomed scopes at launch at least. So he said they were looking into other methods on how to do it as well. Taking a page maybe out of Honor and Doozy and how they do scopes. Which is kind of like a zoomed in flat uh, screen version. According to him I'm not too sure but I've never played Honor and Doozy with the sniper rifle anyway. Uh, but I'm going to assume it's probably safe to say we're not going to get scopes uh, in Alvo on PS Viewer. So next he was asked about the differentiation between rifles, SMG, shotgun. Basically what kind of damage ranges you can expect to do. And the answer is pretty much what you would expect. Shotguns are best at close range. SMGs with their faster rate of fire are good at mid-range and then your assault rifles are good at the furthest ranges and obviously the sniper then as well is going to be you know that long range so nothing surprising about that. So next they got a question about the bayonet. Apparently in the game you're going to be able to attach a bayonet to your weapon. Somebody wrote in asked is it going to be you know on par with something like Saints and Sinners. I believe they specifically said Saints and Sinners. Is it going to work like that where you actually stab someone with the thing and pull it out again. They said don't expect physics like Saints and Sinners. That's such a that's a huge uh, high budget game. What they're thinking more of is like a jab or a swipe and that'll kill or do damage basically pretty similar to firewall except you're going to be using the motion of the motion controllers you're using to actually do the swing in yourself. So next up Steve was asked about servers uh, and I think this was probably the most interesting question because I wasn't expecting this answer at all. All along the way um, in terms of Alvo's um, promotion, the promotion of Alvo on Redis or wherever dedicated servers was like a bullet point this is something we're going to have and that was kind of in response to firewall not having it basically now what's interesting here is that steve says they don't want to say too much about it for security reasons uh, he said it himself that because he said that people are going to be like oh there's no dedicated servers but from what i can tell that does mean there's no dedicated servers because otherwise he would just say the game has dedicated servers now, however, he did go on to say that he's very confident that their solution will not lead to dropped games when players drop out of the game. So their system is going to be if a player drops out, if there's an available player, they're going to slot right in in the middle of that game. And if there's not an available player, there's going to be a boss brought in until there is an available player. And he's talking a lot about how he wants the experience to be mostly playing the game, not in menus and stuff like that. He said 90% playing, 10% not playing. Again, that's a direct kind of uh, addressing of firewall of course one of the biggest complaints about firewall a lot of people feel that you're spending too much time in the menus and stuff like that rather than actually playing the game so here comes alvo saying hey we have we've got the solution to that 90 percent of the time you're playing 10 percent of the time you're not playing but it is interesting that the dedicated servers kind of bullet point seems to be gone from what i understand it could be wrong uh, but i've never heard about uh, kind of not wanting to say what it is for security reasons. That's a new one for me. Maybe someone who has more technical experience can, you know, in the comments fill me in on why that is a thing. So next up he was asked about bullet penetration. So basically the only bullet penetration you're going to see in this game is through foliage. Uh, so not trees, not the trunk of a tree itself, but like bushes and stuff like that. So don't expect your bullets to be going through, you know, wood, metal, stone, anything like that. It's not going to happen. So next up they're asked, is there going to be a ranking system? And if so, what's that ranking system going to be like? So there will be a ranking system, first of all. And he said, he described us as them wanting it to be a serious grind to get to the top. And that if they find that people are getting there too fast, they're going to go in there. They're going to maybe add more ranks and stuff like that uh, to make it so that it, or maybe prestigious or something like that. So that people don't get too, don't get to the top too quickly and that they always have something to be looking forward to. In terms of unlock, ranking will be based on XP, which is pretty similar to Firewall Zero Hour. Finally, the question came up of kill streaks, and he did confirm that there was kill streaks. We kind of knew that already. We've seen the word kill streaks in trailers. We've seen them tease the dog and the terrorist and the remote control car on Twitter. And he said there's going to be kill streaks at three kills, five kills, and seven kills. And that those kill streaks right now they add a lot of chaos in the game. They're testing things out. They're trying to get the um, they're trying to get the chaos more controlled right now and finally they ended by talking a little bit about how they're going to have customized matches which will like really suit league play and if i understand correctly you'll be able to customize it to the point where you can set like a 60 minute match i think that's what he was saying like an hour of playing and five minute break or something maybe i misheard that there was a lot of cutting out and, and like coming back in in the connection of the call uh, so maybe i missed some context there to make more sense of that basically like just real lot lots of gameplay you can expect in alvo uh, if you want that to be gaming for that length of time 
And so yeah, that's basically it for this video. This all this information dump on Algo. Let me know what you think below about you know was this stuff news to you? Uh, if it was news, is it good news? Is it bad news? What do you think? And before I end this video, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their generosity, they're keeping this channel going. I appreciate it very much. Especially, let me give a shout out to these top tier Patreons. We've got Chopped517, welcome to the top tier, Chopped. Thank you very much for the generosity. We've got Tradition, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, and Columbus Thomas III. Thank you very much for the support. I really do appreciate it. I also want to say check out the description below if you want to join on the Patreon or the Discord or follow me on Twitter or whatever you want. And finally, go check out Decepticon.com, whose music is going to be featured in the game of Alvo, which is really cool. Uh, but he also has just good music in general. He's letting me use his music in all my videos. Uh, so go check out Decepticon.com. His newest album is even free to download over on Bandcamp if you want. Uh, so definitely check him out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.